Can everybody hear me? Um, okay, uh, my name is Espen. I come from Denmark. It's a small country, um, about a thousand kilometers east of here. Um, I'm going to talk to, some, uh, talk to you about short run book production, um, about a setup we did one year ago where we want to enter the market for black and white book production. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a bit about where we're from and, and where we are now. Um, our initial company was called LaserTrek, and it is LaserTrek. It's a, a standard uh, digital printing company where we have a couple of uh, agents doing standard collateral uh, materials like brochures and booklets and postcards and posters and all that kind of stuff. Um, we started up 10 years ago um, with a really small uh, photocopier and the second floor in an apartment. And um, then we just moved along with, the, with our customers. Um, 2004, we got into some large format printing, and in 2005, we got our first offset press. So you could say we come from the opposite direction that almost everybody else. Um, most of the people here probably started with an offset press, and then they got into digital. We started with digital, but um, our customers also demanded um, larger run lengths. So um, we started buying offset prints from other. Uh, printing companies, and at some point of time, we got in a volume to, to buy our own offset uh, press. Uh, also in 2005, we started with uh, photo applications. Um, and yeah, one year ago, we then started up this um, book production. Um, we bought a Xerox CF1300, and you can see it at IPEX. Um, Today we employ 75 people and uh, we have five digital presses and, and two full format offset presses. So, um, the idea about starting up the black and white book production more or less started um, two years ago at, at Drupa. Um, we had been visiting um, a, a, um, a print facility in Denmark called New Era Publications. Um, Basically, it's a Scientology print center where they print Scientology books for all over the world. They have 52 different titles, but they have them in 45 different languages. Um, so in this site near Copenhagen, uh, they're producing more than 50,000 books a day digitally. Um, and um, when we were there, we were told that even if they're doing 20,000 copies, they would do it on their digital presses which also are Xerox presses. Um, and we started thinking about why, because uh, in a traditional sense, you would say that the limit between offset and digital is somewhere between 500 and 1,000 copies, where the, the prices will break. Um, and we started calculating on the investment and the price with the click price, and you all know about click prices, and, and compare them to offset. and. Uh, which kind of setup that you can make. And the main thing that you get from a digital press is that you don't have to um, make the signatures and collate them. Uh, when you're making a book in an uh, offset press, you end up with uh, a thousand of this sheet, a thousand of this sheet, and then you will fold them and you will collate them. And in a country like Denmark, where a guy working on the floor at a binder is making around 5,000 US dollars a month, um, that is a very expensive process. Um, we also started talking to potential customers. Um, we got some samples from Xerox uh, on how the quality of this book would look. And, um, and we tried to make a price scheme on, uh, on how, how we, at, at which prices we could produce this. And we were thinking about the setup. Um, also, we, we took a, a big look into Eastern Europe and China to check the prices there because we knew that already now um, a lot of the books sold in Denmark and in Danish are produced in Eastern Europe because of the, the low wages there. So we have a, a huge competition from, from Eastern Europe. Um, and for our model to, to stick so that um, 
that as long as, uh, as, as we could compete with Eastern Europe, that were, was necessary for us. Um, because even though there might only be 20 or 30 percent of the publishers buying from Eastern Europe today, it might be different in five years uh, or ten years. So if we were to build a new company around black and white books, which is um, a not a very high quality issue, it's black and white text we're doing. Um, we had to be able to compete with Poland because we couldn't really sell it and that we're producing it more beautifully or, yeah. So we ended up with this setup, um, the Xerox CF 1300. Um, the new thing about the technology that made me really interested in this was that the, the CF 1300 uses a flash fusing toner. Um, so instead of the, the heat roll that you get from a Nuvera or an Igen, which will take out humidity of the paper, which will make it somewhat curly, especially if it's a, if it's a lightweight paper, say 60, 70 GSM. Um, this uses a flash, and the, the toner is, um, is heated by the flash, but the paper is not. So that when the paper leaves the press, uh, no humidity has left the paper, which means it needs no decurling, it needs no new supply of humidity, so that the paper will remain um, flat, which in order to deliver a professional product, because we're selling to professional publishers, um, this was a great new opportunity. In Denmark, seven, eight years ago, uh, another company had tried uh, to enter the market with digital printing for, for the publishers, and they failed massively because the publishers, um, they're focused on price, but they're also very focused on quality. Um, a book sold for $50 in a bookstore uh, might cost like $2 to produce, so it's not okay to go down in quality to save 10 cents. So we had to meet the quality demands from the publishers. Um, so again, for the finishing, um, some would say we have bought a really overdimensioned uh, binder, but it also hands, it's also about the quality. And in the end, it's fast, but so is the, the CF 1300. So we need to be able to produce a lot of books. Um, yeah, the covers, we have two iGens, and uh, some of the covers are done on the iGens, and some of the covers are done on our Heidelberg presses. It depends on, on the volume of books. Um, actually, we have also been doing as many as 10,000 books. So, um, our concept, um, the concept that we built, was uh, not built on print on demand. We, we're not focused on being really, really fast. Um, we're focused on, on price, mainly. Uh, so this is the exact opposite of what Frank was saying earlier today. Um, we have an eight to 10 days production time, which is normal production time for an offset printer. Um, but we need this in order to um, keep costs low. The continuous feed press is, is not like a sheet fed press. It takes uh, time to load the web, um, and especially if you need to change the width of the web. Um, and you don't just change the paper. So in order to do a rational production, we want to do as many books in a row that is in the same format and on the same paper. And it's the same thing about adjusting the binder. We need to do, uh, the more books we can do in the same format in a row, um, the less cost we will have on, on setting up the equipment. And, um, and then you, you can see at IPEX tomorrow, you will probably see a lot of inline finishing of books. But um, we didn't go for that because um, the problem with inline finishing is if there's something wrong with the press, you can't bind any books. Or if there's something wrong with the binder, you can't print any books. Um, so if you want to go for massive volume, which basically is, is what we're aiming at in order to lower the prices, um, it is not one book at a time. Um, because competitive prices is our key. Um, here you can see some examples of, of what and, and how we're producing it. Um, the top stack of books is from one publisher. The thing about a publisher is that um, they tend to have all their books pretty much in the same format because now they have made their templates and, and stuff like that. So, 
if they can go to us and they can order multiple titles at the same time, um, they can be 200 copies on that, 500 of that, and one book is on 200 pages, and another book is on 400 pages. But the more books we can get at the same time from them, we will save costs on uh, adjusting the printer, adjusting the binder, um, and of course it's also nice to get big orders. Um, so we'll give them a better price. Um, also, um, they have a series of books, like uh, the ones in the bottom, um, some of them are on more than 1,000 pages. Um, yeah. So, um, we have built up the setup where there's a certain startup cost. We all know about startup cost, and you will always have that. Um, but this, our startup cost for the following books is much lower than it is for the first book. So if they, for instance, in this example, we have a, a standard size books. In, in Denmark, it's 140 by 220 millimeters. It could be A5, it could be A4. But the price, if they go to us and order 1,000 copies, 320 pages, would be 1 euro and 88 cent per book. Um, and what we're trying to tell them is to order, for instance, seven books at the same time. Um, and the interesting thing here is that if you take the bottom price, 250 copies and 320 pages, the price is 1 euro and 84 per book. And um, the main gain for the publisher here is that instead of ordering a thousand books and they might not sell all the 1,000 copies, they combine a number of titles at the same time um, and then they can reduce their stock. And from this they get several advantages. Um, first, they're getting the 250 copies at the same price per book as when they're ordering a thousand copies. Um, so they're not um, extending their expenses on buying the books. But in the warehouse, they have a smaller pallet, so they'll save money for, for storage. They have one quarter of the, the amount of money uh, located in the warehouse, so their bank is happy, or the cash credit. And also, um, when they're ordering a thousand books, they hope to sell a thousand books. But it doesn't really always happen. So sometimes, after two or three years, they're throwing away 700 books. And if you only order 250 books, the chance of you throwing away 700 books is pretty minimal. So, um, so this is the message that we went out to the publishers with. And, and believe it or not, this is really not that hard to sell to the publishers. It's an obvious advantage. So, um, In Denmark, Again, it's a very small country. Um, the average run length of the books is 1,200 copies. Um, and you would think then that in Germany it would be 20,000 copies, but it's not. Germany, 1,800 copies. Um, and again, this is why I was so focused on, on competing on price, and I wanted to make a setup where I was able to compete in the 1,000, 1,500 copies. Because when you're dealing with professional publishers, um, they're not going to uh, publish a book unless they're pretty sure that they can sell at least a thousand copies. Because they have uh, um, editorial costs and layout costs and, and that kind of things. So um, being able to sell them 500 books, then you can only sell them the reprint, or the th third reprint or fourth reprint. But if we were able to compete at 1,500 copies, we would be able to get as many as half the titles published, at least. Um, and even in, in, in big countries like United States or Germany, many, many titles is published uh, at around 1,000 covers. So, um, yeah, Boston Lime, about 10,000 covers of different titles are published in the world each day. And in a small country, Denmark, five million people, that's one-tenth the population of, of, of Great Britain. Um, about 14,000 titles are published a year. My guess is that in Great Britain, the number is probably 150,000 titles each year. So it's, a, it's a really a huge, huge market. Um, so um, in order to um, 
to also in, in a total calculation for the publisher to, to actually save the money when they have to order four times as often. We have developed some systems so that it makes it um, really easy for the publishers to, to order new books and um, also to, to track when will they arrive in their stock and, and those things. Um, but also on our, our side, um, in order to keep our costs low, we have developed um, a web site where you can calculate the prices. It's here. Um, this is for a booklet, but you can choose the paper, you can choose the number of copies, number of pages, and on the fly you will, you will see the prices and the products. Um, and by simply clicking the price, you're almost done ordering your, your file, um, your book. Or, brochure, you just have to upload the files and that's pretty much it. Also, um, we have an online info center for all the customers where they can um, track the orders. They can see the current status on their jobs, if they have been finished or they're printing, uh, or um, they can uh, download their invoices if, if they've lost it. Um, they can see the train trace when things has been shipped, and, and of course they also also always receive automated emails with uh, the train trace and the order confirmation. Um, and in bigger corporations where they might have four or five, or ten different people ordering books, well, when a loaner is sick, uh, they can go and see what is the status on, on her order. So, um, in that way, we are adding value to to them so that they can track how they're doing. And how are we doing? Uh, we started up one year ago, um, and today we have reached a volume of more than 350,000 A4 pages per day, um, and we started from nothing. So obviously this is also why Serifs is interesting in this concept, and um, we're not stealing this volume from Nuveras or DockerTex, we're stealing it from Offset. Um, and this is in very small Denmark, and we have zero market share at this point of time. The, the volume in, in black and white textbooks is massive, and it will continue to be massive even with the ebook, uh, iPad, and those applications, because they will only do one thing, and that is lower the number of copies printed. So, questions? Yeah. Um, first, I must say um, I've got an ebook reader and I enjoy using it. Uh, I think it's an amazing piece of technology. Um, and my wife likes it too. Um, and I'm pretty sure that when my kids get a bit older, they will love ebooks on iPad and that kind of stuff. So, of course. Uh, more and more books will be sold. It's not a big thing in Denmark yet. The ebook reader just arrived, I think, half a year ago. But when you go uh, and on the web and, and do some research on this, you will learn that in December 2009, for the first time, Amazon sold more ebooks than they sold physical books. And that is in four years. They've grown that from zero to, I think, 52% in December. Um, so it's uh, a massive challenge to the printing industry, but you can also look at it as an opportunity because if you know that this is the way the things are gonna go, you can go for, for, the, for the shorter run. It's a bit like the, the guy in the stock market who knows that this uh, stock is gonna go down. Well, he will go short to make money on it going down. And, and uh, I don't think that books will, will um, stop being printed, um, but of course, the number will go down. But on the other hand, the number of books published, the number of titles published, will continue to grow. Uh, more and more uh, very specific literature is, is published, um, also with the, with the self-publishing uh, opportunities that, that you have today. Um, so I see it more or less as an opportunity. Mm, not so much. Um, we are doing full color. Um, we're doing them on the iGen, 
Um, and again, the publishers there, of course, the quality must be good, but they're also focused on price, which means that on color books, we can currently <coughs> compete with the officer presses up to around three or 400 covers. Um, the thing is, when we started up the black and white production um, of books, we didn't really do many books, not in black and white, nor in color. But um, because of the volume that we have grown in black and white books, they also come with the, the request for us for the color books. So today we are running about five or 600,000 uh, A3 color prints through the agents a month on color books. So it has grown our volume and, and did some color too. So that was a, a side, positive side effect on, on our investment in black and white. Um, well, of course, we're talking to the publisher about their needs. Um, in Denmark, there are two big book warehouses. Uh, the one warehouse is owned by the largest Danish publisher, and they also sell their warehouse services to other publishers. And then there's another warehouse that is owned partially by a lot of publishers and uh, by the bookstores. Um, and the thing is that I've had some discussions about uh, printing books on demand, especially um, the older titles that might sell 50 or 100 copies a year um, if we can produce them on demand. And of course, this is an option. It is more expensive to produce a book uh, one up than it is to produce 50 or 100 at the time because um, if you have to put it into an on-demand setup, you will have to still have to, to do the checking of the files and you have to put them into a system and put in a lot of data on the books and number of pages format. Um, all those stuff. Um, and the cost for that is, is actually pretty high compared to what it costs to produce 100 books. Um, and also, the publishers is not getting um, every cent worth of the, of the print on demand. The, thing, the idea should be that we printed the book and then send it directly to the customer. But the thing is, they, get, they already got these big warehouses. and. They can't shut down the warehouses because we start printing books on demand. So they will continue to have the cost for the warehouse. And our price for the shipping to the bookstore that ordered the book um, is also an additional cost. And the thing is that these two big warehouses, they have combined the shipping. So every day, several trucks is, is driving out to all the bookstores. And the books that we might send directly, um, then just not in the truck then. Um, and one of the ways that you would save cost on printing on demand is that you won't have to pick it from the shelf in the warehouse. Um, but this is still, much, still cheaper to pick it from a shelf in the warehouse than it is to ship it directly to the bookstore. So one of the solutions that I'm currently working with is to try to make a setup where we produce maybe 60 or 70 books because that would cut away some of the work that they're doing in the warehouse where they pick it from the pallet and put it into something they call a picket box with it basically it's robots taking out the boxes in, in front of the guys putting them into the boxes for the bookstore. Um, so of course we are very focused on, on the customer need and and how we can you know create value for for them in in the stock and in the amount of money they have and of course the price in the book. So what is the total price for printing the book and handling the book. Yeah, okay. If you've got any questions, um, yeah, I'll be here all day. And um, I brought some books if, if you've seen how, what, what they look like. Okay.